so we are tech lt world team and we are uh, uh, four to five guys who are expert in this uh, field so uh, like we believe in like to share the knowledge learn and share together so we came up with a uh, webinar of open ren on 7th of uh, february so we got a good response and got very good feedbacks also we got some good questions also so uh, today we uh, hope I'll uh, hope we will give the answer to those questions and uh, the other questions which will be raising by you people at the end of the session. So one point to note here is like uh, question and answer session will be at the last. So uh, there will be no uh, questions and answers in between. So we'll give around 20 to 25 minutes for questions. So uh, let's start then. So good afternoon all. Uh, I hope everyone is safe at their place. All are working fine and keeping healthy. So let's start. So basically last, last time we started with the open RAN introduction. So today we are going to cover CUS plane. So we have different as uh, uh, like Deepak is there today also with us. So uh, like last time he introduced about the CUS plane. So today we'll be going somewhat deep into that. So uh, let's go first with the precap what we have done in the last webinar. So uh, the topics we have covered last webinar is uh, like introduction of open RAN, uh, when it came, what is the history, why it is needed, and uh, what is actual open RAN means in a layman language we have told in that webinar. Then we have covered architectural difference between 4G RAN and uh, 5G RAN architecture. Then we also have covered uh, CUDURU, the hardware and the, the softwares which is being used by different companies. All that stuff we have covered in our third topic. Then we have covered high level architecture of 4N and uh, different type of interfaces in the uh, high level architecture. Then most important, we have given a lot of time on CIPRI and eCIPRI at that time. So because this is a new concept, so uh, which is being used basically in ORN. Uh, so we have covered that also in our last webinar, different type of planes. We have touched the planes, what it is. Today we'll go deep down into that. Then we have functional splits in ORN. Uh, different splits are there and uh, which is the ORN split, which vendors are, which operators are using the ORN splits, which one they are using, which they are going to use. So that all we have uh, uh, covered in uh, last webinar. Then we have working groups. We have different working group for different uh, topics, you can say, and like uh, CUS, we have working group four. Then we have use cases, uh, like what is the use case of open RAN? And then we have, uh, uh, then we had this challenges in our end, like what is the limitation, uh, how it will move forward, what, uh, which vendors are working on it, how they are working. So we have covered all these topics in our first webinar. If anyone haven't gone through that and if anyone new in this webinar, so they can uh, simply uh, see those uh, webinar. We have a YouTube channel from TechLT World. We have there this uh, uh, video uploaded and we'll share the link also in the description uh, in the chat box also. So uh, today uh, I am going to precap some basic about open RAN so that uh, as I can see new faces also. So I'll simply share the precap uh, of uh, introduction of ORN, what it is and uh, what is required to understand today's uh, CUS uh, plane in deep so that uh, uh, we all are on same page, right? So let's start with that. So basically open RAN is a concept which came by uh, ORAN Alliance or uh, like uh, after some POCs done by uh, Vodafone and Redis's. So it is a concept of separating the uh, RAN functionality like using SDN and the Quartz hardware. So it is, it is uh, 
uh, it is basically a disaggregated rand functionality and uh, uh, in in which uh, in my open ran environment the ran is divided into uh, three main building uh, blocks like uh, radio unit uh, distributed unit and centralized unit so uh, as we can see nowadays like our uh, uh, lt is very much matured and we have if anybody is working on research side uh, we have uh, our baseband units so baseband units uh, have uh, like a uh, protocol stack so that protocol stack itself is uh, in that baseband unit so what is happening now with respect to open ran is that baseband unit itself is split into two uh, two units that is your centralized unit and distributed unit so uh, with this our protocol stack also being uh, distributed and we have already in 4g like uh, rrh so here we have radio unit so rrh is basically uh, connected to my antenna uh, in the, if you go with the uh, architecture or the basic diagram of uh, how my uh, site is integrated so we have rrh then we are connected with rf cable to my uh, uh, this uh, antenna so uh, this is this is what was in my 4g so now what is happening like in we have uh, latency constraints if we go with the 5g technology so we need to uh, like uh, minimize the latency so keeping all these uh, points in consideration so if you can see this diagram so we have this rrh uh, rru uh, if you if you uh, talk in oran language we are uh, having this radio unit so earlier what is happening uh, my rrh is connected to my antenna and my uh, rrh connected to my baseband unit through cipri so uh, now what they have done is to minimize the latency first of all they have uh, there will be no uh, connection of rrh and antenna now my radio unit contains my antenna so uh, there we have minimized the latency and other thing is like we have virtualized my uh, cu and du part that is centralized unit and distributed unit so it is ba it is based off cots server so uh, cots uh, server or software if you can say it is a term or software product that are ready made available for uh, purchase of commercial market so it is basically a, a server on which we can uh, like uh, uh, like uh, install or you can say the the uh, cu or du so it is uh, uh, based upon that so if you uh, if we can understand this uh, structure so uh, my B, bbu is being split into cu and du and my radio unit is based on gpp uh, gpp uh, cots hardware based so uh, this is what has been done to like minimize the latency to get the flexibility and first of all uh, why it is done is like uh, because of the capex also so if in my uh, if you uh, talk about the 4g technology we can cover around six to seven hundred uh, meters from my uh, radio antenna right but if you take uh, consideration into 5g technology so in that case as we have mm waves also so we have uh, like uh, these waves in which we can have a uh, uh, coverage of around 100 or 200 meters you can say like that so keeping these things into my uh, into mind so uh, oran alliance came up with this uh, uh, technology uh, like uh, uh, my uh, radio uh, radio unit there there will be n number of radio units will be connected to my distributed unit so uh, with one distributed unit we can have n number of radio units so this is what uh, open ran uh, technology comes come up with and the one one more thing came up is like uh, open ran itself giving the name of open opening the ran earlier what is uh, what is happening is like if we have a bbu uh, from nokia then we have uh, we used to have rrh from nokia also so that is vendor specific so now what is happening is like uh, my uh, radio unit and my cu and my du is from different vendors so we can say like uh, 
uh, lots of uh, product based companies are working on it and uh, as uh, open ran is still in uh, development phase so lots of uh, 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 vendors and operators also working with oran alliance to get it successful by uh, around uh, like uh, uh, that is not fixed but what we are aware like by 2023 or something like that uh, uh all the 4g 3g 2g and 5g also will be based off oren so this uh, there will be a benefit for uh like uh, all for all of us the the one which are working in this telecom technology telecommunication and uh, the vendors the product companies to deliver the product so this is what uh, basically the main uh, uh what we can say agenda of uh, bringing the open ran technology into the existence so uh next we can see see in the next slide like uh the, yeah yeah uh, yeah this one so we have oran alliance from different vendors you can see here like we have a number of companies around 60 to 70 vendors which is working in oran alliance we can say vendors or product companies if you can see fujitsu is one of the company which is producing radio unit then mavnier is working uh, uh, producing cu and du and lto star these are the key players which are uh, giving their products uh, and uh, they are working in a alliance to like uh get it successful uh, get the this technology in a, in a successful note by uh, 2023 or uh, at that time so going forward we can see which what all operators are connected with that is uh, we have atnt atel everyone is all big operators jio and singtel all dish dish is also there so all are working to get this technology into existence so nowadays it is like uh, everyone wants to know what open ran is and how it is working this is basically a very uh, uh, good technology we can say and uh, we have uh, uh, once this uh, technology we can we can say that there there will be no monopoly we cannot use this word but still we all know that this there is a monopoly of ericsson huawei or nokia but still yes now ran is getting open so we we can learn more and we can have a good uh, future in uh, wireless telecommunication we can say like that so this is what actually open ran is so other thing is like uh, deepak yeah uh, yeah this slide so uh, in this slide i'll i'll uh, like describe something about the architecture difference between my 4g and 5g ran architecture and what is being adapted by uh, oren so oren has been adapted by this ran uh, 5g ran architecture as i have dis uh, discussed uh, like my baseband has been distributed in cu and du so you can see like uh, now my stack is also uh, being distributed so if you can see with respect to 4g earlier what we used to have we have we used to have 4g lte pc connected to my uh, e node b and e node b is having uh, if you can say 4g e node b is having uh, full architecture is bbu and rrh and then antenna so uh, now we can see like uh, uh, there will be 5g core and then 5g e node b is having cu du and ru so my cu is uh, like uh, uh, having uh, some protocols and uh, like uh, uh, rrc then pdcp then we have one more protocol as dep protocol then uh, uh, du is uh, like uh, my du is having rlc mac and uh, hi fi so we have distributed this uh, fi into uh high fi and low fi so are you contains my low fi also so uh, like uh, why this has been uh, done because uh, uh to minimize the latency if you see uh, the basic requirement in my 5g ran or 5g technology is to minimize the uh, latency so uh, they have uh, introduced this low fi into my radio unit as my uh, low fi consists of fft ifft then cp addition then 
scratch and digital beam forming these all things have been there in my radio unit so these are the time taking process so they they uh, the 3gpp uh, uh, like 3gpp have decided to go with the full fi uh, lo fi in my uh, radio unit so going forward is like uh, when we ex uh, like 5g uh, work on v2x technology if you say something about use cases or these things so uh, uh, that is why they have uh, given this uh, lo-fi in a radio unit so the reason to give is like to give less latency so uh, that is uh, the reason and uh, going forward uh, can you uh, uh, next slide can you Deepak show the next slide I'll explain use cases first so, yeah so uh, use cases is like we have ultra low latency and then we have low latency voice services and then we have legs uh, relaxed latency so if you say about the use cases of open RAN, like uh, we have a data center we have a central data center uh, data center and then regional data center and then we have edge data center so it depends upon the uh, requirement from the customer or you could you can say like requirement as per the requirement we can have this uh, 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 cudu ru in place if you see the first ultra low latency you can you can take an example of v2x technology so there what is happening we have roadside base stations which is communicating with the, my modem chipset which is being inserted into my uh, vehicles or you can say car so uh, my all uh, car communication with each other will be happening through this uh, uh, ultra low latency so here my open RAN comes into effect if I don't want uh, like uh, my CUDU to be in place like uh, a regional data center or somewhere uh, else so if I want on very low latency we can use my CUDU RU all those into my uh, roadside base station so as we are aware like cudu is already a virtualized affair now so uh, uh, we can have this uh, 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 this technology into existence and this is uh, in like this is already in being used in a few of the countries so if you come into a low latency voice services we can have macro cell so in that case we we do have radio units on our sites and we don't want our du's and cu's to be uh, like uh, present at the site so as already it is being uh, virtualized so we can have these at some edge data center or regional data center depending upon the requirements and the third one is like relaxed latency if you take an example of uh, uh, giving an indoor network connectivity to a standalone uh, industry or something in the countryside so we can we can uh, uh, like uh, we can go with this uh, uh, relaxed latency this is a use case like uh, if you need to give an indoor uh, pico cell or booster or something like that in an industry you can have this uh, 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 this is a use case of relaxed latency so after that like these are these all are the use cases uh, what what is being used in open RAN. so after that we have the splits uh, option I have given a brief introduction last time also in the webinar so open RAN split is 7.2 X uh, and this is being used and have been achieved by uh, operators which are working for uh, like uh, open adopting the open RAN technology so it also depends upon the like operator or OEM base it depends upon operator which split option they want to use uh, Deepak can you go through the split option uh, slide it's it's uh, before use cases yeah so if you if you can see this uh, you you all can zoom this uh, 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 slide so if you can see we have different split options we have 7 7.1 7 7.2 7.3 then we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 if you can zoom if you can zoom in this and you can see the protocol stack and uh, uh, like there are splits 
डिफाइनिंग दोज प्रोटोकॉल स्टैक लाइक इफ यू इफ यू गो टू द डाउन ऑफ दिस डायग्राम एंड सी सी यू एंड डी यू मैपिंग the last one uh, we can see the 7.2x is having cu du uh, uh, there is a back hall then cu du and front hall is being uh, uh, like uh, front hall is being there and if you if you go up you can see your low fi is uh, uh, low fi is having this uh, radio unit radio unit is having low fi so this the main motive to give this uh, Uh, diagram is to understand what actually split is we have two double splits and uh, we have 7.2x what i came to know like geo is uh, working for split 6 so they will be having are you uh, they will be having hi fi and low fi both in radio unit so uh, they need they need to have a more powerful energy radio unit and uh, more powerful fpgas which can process all those uh, pre coding and all those what is what is having in my file layer so uh, depending upon the customer requirement how they want to uh, like uh, how they want to uh, deploy open ran so this is what uh, split option in my 5g or you can say uh open ran what is what what operators are going to uh, like achieve so this depends upon them and uh, the main agenda to give this slide is uh, like you people uh, you all can understand how to read this open uh, like split options so by seeing this uh, diagram uh, so we used to get like uh, i am not understanding this and so that is why i have un- like explained how it is uh, we can read this document so uh, this is all about a basic introduction of open ran and if anyone also wants to go more deep into the introduction uh, we have a, a youtube video and we have a youtube channel so we'll be sharing the link in the chat box after this if anybody has not joined uh, this uh, webinar one they can go through that and uh, going through we have types of planes so from here now deepak as deepak has uh, will be uh, talking more about uh, cus plane so he will be explaining from basic of type of planes and then he'll take on cus plane so over to you deepak thank you all happy learning thanks so thank you jatan so thanks all for joining so you people might be some of some of them joined first webinar some of them not joined so they can go through with that video if they want some more uh, technical depth of first webinar and so now uh, coming uh, moving forward we are, i am going to explain the type of plane so what is the plane so actually there are uh, in in oran noran uh, technology we split the uh, cu we we split our our uh, different protocol layer <clears throat> so, so basically for types of plane we i am going to discuss between du and rrh so there are three four type of uh, plane so now today we, i will discuss the control plane user plane synchronization plane management plane i will discuss in some more webinar so so what is the plane actually i'm just i'm just uh, drawing the diagram so this is the our du this is rrh rrh is deployed at field here i have then explain uh, lower file layer reside here right lower file this is our du so how du will send the uh, send the uh, any any information message any signaling message any controlling message all these thing is covered by this three plane control plane user plane and synchronization plane so uh, i will discuss uh, one by one each plane means what is the requirement of control plane what is the requirement of user plane so mostly people can understand uh, the user plane. just when anyone is on mute you can you can mute you people can mute yourself means uh, after after end of session we will take your question and answer or wait wait for wait for some more uh, 45 minute i will explain those things then we we will take the your question and answer okay so uh, i am moving forward so so this is the our 
control plane so in control plane wh what is the requirement of control plane basically what happened in legacy technology our 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 and our, our antenna is like this right and bb is reside here only so bb unity reside here only so the bb you can directly send the iq data or user data means mostly processing happening happens at here and bb you can directly send the, those data but here in open and architecture so because because bbu having some uh, some uh, uh, fixed data format all the all the all the node in in legacy technology legacy arrangement of network so i am again i am saying open ran is not a new technology it's a arran arrangement of network that's it so means as per my understanding so if if in legacy technology all the communication is go via um, in between in same um, with same equipment vendor so the same equipment equipment vendor can easily easily know what is the message type right but here here in in open ran uh, we we use different different user for different different node so suppose your rs belong to something x company this this belong to x company right and this belong to y y manufacturer so how they can communicate each, each other right so for this open ran alliance will uh, come came with one solution like we can create c plane c c plane protocol just for uh, addressing those limitations so what is the c plane protocol actually c plane protocol c plane protocol basically uh, uh, basically uh, just c c plane protocol uh, basically manage the ma manage the data uh, from rs to du from du to rs so there are there are different different uh, different different uh, uh, work for c plane like so scheduling and beam, beam forming command transfer mixed numerology and peerage handling symbol numbering and duration dl pre coding configuration parameter and indication and so if you see the data flow if you see the data flow between odu and orn actually when when you when uh, do you want to send some data at rn this is the front hall this is du this is rh this is this is rh and this is du right so before sending actual data before sending actual data first du will send the control data that control data that control data will why why control data is sent for uh, send it uh, towards du because if if du will when send the user data so understanding how oru will interpret those data those iq values those data how oru can interpret those data for interpreting those uh, those data oru means do you should send some instruction prior to sending those data because there are some processing time is there right so before suppose suppose uh, if if actual data is sent at x time right this is the iq data in sent at oru side at, at x time then our control plane must be sent before x time means x minus something y means some some delta y is there so before sending actual user data in ev should e node b should send e node b might in in case of in here do you should send uh, control plane data before that so that rru can configure accordingly so that means if if any user data is coming towards our side then ru will interpret those data and act accordingly right so what is the what is the control plane means what is the actual data belongs to control plane so if rru suppose suppose uh, uh, do you want to send uh, uh, do you want to send some this this can be either way means do you can send the uh, control plane instruction towards ru and ru can also send the control plane instruction towards du so first if uh, we are talking about first scheduling and we informing command transfer so when when do you send uh, <coughs> data for oru and uh, means there are a lot of data uh, combined together for different different ev that is served by that particular cell site so so in, do you should send some beam forming command if if ORU is capable of beam forming or multi user MIMO, MICE MIMO, all those instructions should be sent by DU before the actual 
data before the actual frequency domain data that frequency domain data is iq sample iq data so before sending actual user iq data you is do you should send the control plane data for beam forming or scheduling information suppose there are a lot of this this uh, uh, there are 10 means 100 ev connected with this are you right so for 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 scheduling and beam forming information for each ev for uh, for each ev what do you should send the control plane data regarding this right so next one is mixed numerology and p rash handling so what is the mixed numerology and p rash handling as you people know like uh, in oran basically came into existence means uh, two to three years back so uh, it basically it will come in uh, 2018 at that time 5g is matured right means 5g is very much matured state so all the specs is fridge for 5g so uh, in 5g in 5g we we people are knowing like 5g physical layer is very much there are a lot of difference between physical layer for 4g and 5g in lt what what neurology we are using mostly we are using 15 kilohertz numerology right? but in case of 5g we are using 15 kilohertz 30 kilohertz uh, 60 kilohertz 120 kilohertz and 240 kilohertz so uh, in in uh, legacy technology lt only 15 kilohertz is there right so we can one time configuration uh, we can done at rs side yes rs you need to radiate uh, with 15 kilohertz subcarrier space but here 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 we are using different different neurology and if you people having some idea about 5g uh, maybe we will cover this those thing on uh, next webinar for 5g basics webinar so that is the out of scope here but if you people are uh, if you people are some some people are having some idea about 5g at least you people having some idea like there are different different numerology so here in legacy network 15 kilohertz is fixed right but but in case of but in case of 5g we cannot fix the uh, we cannot fix the we cannot fix the subcarrier spacing and the subcarrier spacing might be vary from slot to slot might be this slot uh, is uh, this uh, this slot this subframe is configured for sub, uh, subcarrier num subcarrier 15 kilohertz might be next next subframe is configured for subcarrier 60 kilohertz means we are dynamically changing the subcarrier spacing so we cannot we cannot configure ORU for some ORU means suppose we have 100 kilo 100 megahertz bandwidth right in case of uh, 5g maximum bandwidth is, it means 100 100 megahertz bandwidth is there so if 100 megahertz bandwidth is there then we cannot decide like 15 25 megahertz bandwidth we will cover with 15 15 kilohertz subcarrier spacing and uh, uh, from 25 to 50 we, we, we will use uh, something like uh, uh, 30 kilohertz so that is not fixed so suppose do you schedule some data do you schedule some data for for a lot of there there are a lot of each connected so do you schedule some data for in in some in any particular subframe right so in that case do you should also uh, send the control plane instruction for that particular subframe and for handling the mixed numerology and means that uh, for handling the mixed numerology do you should send the control plane there are a lot of header we will not discuss here means that will company proprietary header means for company proprietary log we can collect but we will try to cover those things means the practical aspect of control plane how control plane is mac control plane message is going from you to are you are you to do you for that we we need to capture some wires arc we need to take a log between ORU and DU, du by using wires arc tool that wires arc tool is not a, a free version that is that is a third wires arc so uh, uh, we will discuss those things uh, later but here uh, the main agenda is how what is the use of uh, this control plan so mixed uh, mixed numerology you people are understand uh, understood to all of you so next one is p rash handling what is the p rash handling so for p rash handling do you should send means uh, p rash which kind of p rash uh, uh, format is there right means uh, suppose suppose oru is sending p rash towards odu right o, o, first oru will intercept p rash from a different different tv right so this we can send the p rash means rash, random access uh, rash, rash request so for handling those rash do you should 
configure at ORU side like this kind of range we we want to expect. So there are a lot of format means uh, you might be people you people uh, heard about uh, P range format zero one two three A B means in 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 our five uh, G there are a lot of uh, short format is there long format is there for handling those P range format we require C plane right symbol numbering and duration next is symbol numbering and duration right so here here uh here you people are knowing like in in case of 5g in case of 5g in case of lt our scheduling duration is one millisecond means one subframe only right but here we are scheduling our here scheduling is done at slot level right slot level as well as in in one slot from this symbol number uh, data scheduled for this any particular review means there are a lot of uh, uh, variation for uh, scheduling the scheduling the data for any particular scheduling the resource not data actually scheduling the resource means that prb that resource in time domain and frequency domain there are a lot of flexibility so for for using those flexibility we need to configure like uh, each time we need to uh, send uh, some some control message towards are you like hello are you you need to uh, schedule this from this slot number to the from in this slot from this uh, symbol number to this symbol number you need to schedule an eva for this symbol number to this symbol number you should uh, schedule for evb as per as per your as per data sent by uh, uh as per uh, as per data sent by user user data right means as when when uh, these all those things should be configured at rl side next one dl precoding in configuration parameter and indication so basically this uh, we have we have two type of rrs one is type a and one second one is type b so type a means in in type a precoding and all this configuration done at odu side so if uh, type a rr you mostly nowadays industry in in nowadays people, maximum people are using type a only but some there are two um, one more option type b in type b this downlink precoding and configuration uh, um, done at rh in right but in type a all these things happen at um, du side so if all these things happen at du side then uh, there is no uh, um, no c plane required for this thing if we are using type 2 rrs in that case we require downlink precoding configuration parameter precoding is out of scope but uh, that is very interesting topic we will discuss this might be in some in next webinar for 5g physical layer basics so we will discuss precoding in depth so but uh, nowadays this is uh, this topic is out of scope but uh, if our rrs is type 2 then uh, this kind of control plane is also required okay so here here data flow means here if you see if you see the red red data just i am just clearing the screen so that you okay so here you are seeing in red line this is from odu to oru this is the scheduling command dl level and beam forming command right so here means the data scheduling command is sent towards uh, odu to oru after sending scheduling command, ORU will configure. There are some uh, some FPGA deal, delay after taking the data after after receiving the data. So means FPGA will FPGA will configure those data at uh, means uh, at RRU. FPGA means if people are uh, knowing like means some programming field gate array. So that is that is the processor actually processor. So uh, uh, after after taking data from ODU at uh, over CPU interface. So ORU will configure accordingly and act accordingly for user plane data, right? So next technology, uh, next you might be heard means uh, if you go through uh, three uh, ORAN specs uh, working group two or four, three, four, any any specs for CUS plane, they the new people can uh, uh, find this thing means listen before talk uh, technique means LL LAA features LA means license assistance access that is basically uh, that is means if if any operator support this la feature la feature means uh, operator need not to buy some dedicated spectrum from uh, any government authority that is free spectrum like wi-fi band 2.5 gigahertz something 5 gigahertz some some spectrum is free so that spectrum can be utilized by uh, our operator means any operator can use those spectrum but that is free so there might be chances maximum people means uh, might be two or three more people are using same spectrum 
so for this you you should send send a command for one 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 technique is there that is that is legacy technique means listen before talk means it will send the instruction towards are you hello are you just just listen whole whole area means then what are you will do or you will scan the whole whole spectrum whole means or you will uh, scan the scan the signal in their covering area uh, like might be might be some people are using those 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 spectrum so or you will get to know like yes these people some some set of people are using this spectrum right so that information is that that configuration is conveyed by control plane and this data flow for means this is the lbt status and response message means after after uh, receiving the command for configuration parameter and request or you will request uh, means uh, return back that response so i am moving ahead so that's all about control plane and next one is user plane protocol so what is user plane protocol user plane is very straightforward the people all the people are knowing what is user plane actually each each plane having some set of header also ec pre header is different for ec pre like uh, if you talk about header like in, in case of uh, you people are knowing like uh, 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 if any protocol is there ip protocol ethernet protocol or udp protocol for uh, for if you are sending any any uh, protocol uh, in we are embedding some data in uh, by using those protocol then there must be some header for handling those data so here here control plane if we are talking about control plane so in control plane we have different different uh, different kind of header so means a uh, ec pre header means ec pre header basically uh, tell you like uh, ec pre and just time i'm 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 explaining to you the what is the header content in case of control plane mostly header content is uh, means uh, some uh, ec pre protocol revision version what is uh, some rigid uh, rigid bit is the ec pre message type means message type might be real time control data or real time data so next one is ec pre payload size means what is the payload size of ec pre message in case of control plane as well as in case of user plane we are also giving this and apart from this over and front hall cvs control plane header is there that is in built in ec pre header in that we have lot of lot of uh, configuration cu port id baseband sector id cc id how you know we can uh, how rh can configure themselves by using those those uh, control plane messages so most uh, some pro uh, some something we are conveyed in in uh, in our uh, c plane u data and something we can convey in c plane uh, c plane data's header means c, uh, c pre header so this c pre header means uh, some sequence id is there c plane uh, section type is there means uh, that is out of the scope because if you discuss all uh, all those things so that will take some more uh, to our discussion for control plane itself so that will cover might be we will uh, if uh, we will cover in next webinar or uh, in somewhere else so this thing are this thing are the basically in control plane mostly uh, we can we can send the data towards uh, by using ec pre interface and ec pre header for control plane and user plane have different different data so in case of user plane data in case of user plane data what is user plane data actual user plane data means whichever data uh, ODU you receive from ocu or or uh, you can say from yes gateway in case of 4g and uh, means whichever data we are getting from backend uh, for for uh, means uh, for uh, for ev means there are a lot of ev connected simultaneously with this oru and odu so those data will came from s yes, gateway or means uh, from pump uh, to from network towards due side or sending over mid hall interface mid, uh, front hall interface front hall interface means odu and oru so that that data is called dl dlr data that is actual user data suppose we are we are uh, connect we are uh, just clicking the youtube youtube website so youtube website means uh, uh, you just click the youtube website and you uh, you can get uh, some data from youtube uh, and you you want to 
download some data that is also your actual user data so that is user product user plane data for for sending user plane data we use uh, we use we first first uh, uh, by taking user plane data we will convert those data into iq format so that or you can uh, generate those uh, uh, generate the electromagnetic signal by using those iq data iq data basically that data belongs to uh, uh, frequency uh, means so that data is frequency domain data so means actual real time data we will convert those data into frequency domain by using fa fast fourier transform ff technique we are using so actual iq data uh, is this uh, belongs to our original means user data so by taking this uh, this iq data this iq data or you can, is able to uh, generate the real waveform real el electromagnetic waveform so for for generating real electromagnetic waveform wave so we need to send user uh, plane data along with user planes header so maximum uh, how user uh, by taking iq data at rs in the uh, how rs will interpret those data by taking those data first rs will uh, check the uh, respective control plane message for this particular user plane data so uh, uh, um, uh, ODU or ORU uh, is sended those control plane data in advance before sending the user plane data. So after uh, taking those data, uh, those control plane instruction ORU is able to send those uh, user plane data at air interface or at a front hall uh, front hall interface. If that data is uh, this is the first part. This is the DL part. And what is the UL part? In UL part, there are a lot of U is connected, right? So I am just uh, just uh, digging down more in this things. So there are a lot of U, right? This is the U connected with this particular RH. How this data is sent uh, means over air interface. So this data is air interface means electromagnetic data, EM wave, right? EM wave basically. So what RH will do? RH will intercept those EM wave and convert means that is that is frequency that is uh, actual time domain data means time domain data means real this uh, uh, interception at rh is like this some something like this means something like this will be happen right if you see the vsa and v, vg vsa means v, uh, signal analyzer then you can see like this this kind of waveform is there so what what next what are you will do are you will rre will convert those those spectrum into frequency domain frequency domain and after after converting frequency domain it means rr will uh, uh, bifurcate those frequency domain data into i and q format we will discuss i and q in more depth in next webinar physical physical layer structure of 5g but as of now just you can just understand like something i and q is the data belong to frequency domain so each each i and q data might be represented by using some bit means some 9 9 bit or 10 10 bit or 16 16 bit so each is sample having if we are using 16 bit of data for i and q then each sample will carry it by 32 bit of data so actually this iq data belong to some some set of bit right so that bit that bit is send it uh, at in uplink side that bit is send it towards du side so D will take those data and interpret uh, interpret those data accordingly, right? So in in uh, next one is next one is user planes means user uh, next one is data compression. So data compression is basically we are uh, scaling our our IQ data IQ like suppose 16 16 bit IQ data is there right in in CIPRI interface, but if you are uh, for for utilizing our CPRI interface means in in uh, optimized way we can compress our data right means uh, actually what is IQ sample IQ sample is just nothing but a amplitude amplitude of I and Q so we can scale down or scale up those amplitude right if we scale down those amplitude then instead of suppose suppose uh, uh, suppose we are we are using uh, from from uh, from in log to when we convert ADC and log to digital converter. After this, each sample will carry it by 16 bit, 16 bit I plus 16 bit Q. Right. So 
we can scale down this thing if you scale down nowadays uh, maximum people are implementing those things those technique dark floating point compression by using bfp technique we can compress down it at 9 bit so how much bit gain we can receive by this thing this 9 bit i and 9 bit q so total total 18 bit is there here 62 bit is there right so total gain is uh, something around 14 bit so we can save 14 bit uh, front hall front hall uh, uh, front hall uh, front hall we can say 14 bit uh, in front hall means uh, between du to rh right if we use scaling technique so data compression technique basically for data compression technique we are using digital power scaling digital power scaling is just we can increase or decrease the amplitude at uh, at uh, or do you means uh, this digital power scaling means we can send some some scaling factor for for our amplitude because power is directly become uh, proportional to amplitude so we can uh, decrease and increase our signal amplitude for for saving the for saving the uh, data right data speed so iq data uh, transfer procedure is belong to also user plane iq data transfer procedure procedure means just first we will uh, first we will convert cold data in, into iq iq format then uh, after that we will convert those data means we will compress those data then digital power is scanning then we can send over front hall interface right so here here note down one thing here we are using we are using frequency domain signal data only what is frequency do domains uh, data you might you people might be heard about fourier transform in your in your uh, uh, graduation level course in fourier transform we can by using suppose ext is there right ext is your actual data means actual uh, time domain data by doing fft fourier fast fourier transform we can find x omega right so this is x omega or hf this is the frequency domain data so uh, how we can convert those data we are just means uh, here we are using uh, uh, digital signal means so here we are using n is equal to 0 to infinity uh, ext e to power minus j, j something 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 this uh, this type of formula is there for converting uh, uh, time domain signal into electro uh, at frequency domain and reverse process is also there we are we can we can use those frequency domain signal and we can convert back into time domain by using some formula and that formula we can implement that by using fpga means fpga means we at, at our our base our chipset is able to handle those things means dsp there are in our chipset some dsp equipment is there dsp processing equipment is there that things is hand, handled by by those those uh, part of our uh, our our chipset our modem our chipset okay so that's all about user plane data so next is very interesting so, yes plane data so yes plane data basically what is the yes plane yes plane means synchronization plane. so synchronization means uh if we are using different different node in oran right this is the oran this is the du this is cu something c suppose we are talking about only d1 r this du is sending some data towards this this r is sending some data towards this so but this sending data time should be sync between ru and du so so this du and ru must be time sync must be time sync right must be time sync if this du and ru is not uh, time sync then ru cannot read the data sended by du and du uh, can also not uh, read the data sended by ru if both are not sync so for for uh, for uh, for for this solution uh, or and people will come with this and this uh, yes plane protocol right yes plane protocol basically yes plane means synchronization then so there are two type of synchronization first is we two protocol we are using for synchronization ptp and synky so synky is basically for phase synchronization phase synchronization and a ptp is for timing uh, timing synchronization so phase synchronization and timing synchronization actually we are just trigger one one pulse right this is this pulse is called some uh, pulse per second one pulse per second 
so that uh, that pulse is uh, taken i will i will explain the, those thing by uh, in next upcoming slide how how the model is implemented so those pulse is like uh, uh, just just that pulse is triggered towards this side from some external external grandmaster is there that simultaneously that pulse is received by this du and ru ru simultaneously so du and ru will uh, that that pulse contains some timing information and that timing information is stored at du's local oscillator so so du du and uh, at uh, du and R, rru as well so those two node will sync by by receiving the pulse from some external grandmaster and from uh, uh, for for uh, for timing sync and that uh, that grandmaster is nothing but a simply simply a application application is there that application is also we can deploy at cloud side right and that grand uh, grandmaster from where uh, grandmaster is taking the signal so the grandmaster is taking signal from some gps gps is uh, and gps is sync with geostationary uh, satellite right so gps is taking signal from satellite and that signal is passed towards grandmaster and grandmaster will send those those ptp packet towards du and rr okay so that is the yes plane protocol for uh, for for syncing the two node so one minute give me one minute Hi all, sorry for the delay. Uh, if anybody is having question, they can write it in chat box. We'll go for the questions and answer after the session is completed. Thank you. Sorry for delay. Actually, my pen is not working. That's why I'm doing this. So, so moving forward, that's all about S plane. What is the use of S plane? Just syncing the both node for timing, for for timing, uh, because means this RU should be both should be time sync. Suppose if ODU is sending some data for this particular this RU, and that data is not in sync, so ORU cannot interpret those data. So there are different type of uh, for for synchronization plane. There are different type of uh, configuration C1 to LLS, C1, C2, C3, C4. So that that all the specification belong to IEEE. The IEEE basically uh, told like what is the configuration for. Uh, see, this is the configuration for uh, different different configuration we are using. I will take one configuration example for for your understanding. So here, if we uh, take about configuration LLS C1, so network timing from ODU to ORU via point-to-point -point topology between central side and remote side. So here, ODU basically uh, ODU basically send the uh, PTP packet towards RU. Right. So next one is the uh, but from ODU uh, takes those uh, those PTP packet from Grandmaster. Right. So next one is configuration LS, LLS C C2. So network timing means these these are uh, these are I uh, means ODU and ORE which directly controlled by central side means they they both are connected with some one uh, one single source. So next one is next one is uh, uh, configuration LLS C3. I will explain this thing in uh, some greater detail further. So means network here here what we are doing in configuration LLS 3 we are using PRTC at uh, means Grandmaster. Uh, uh, and that grandmaster should connected with a switch a common switch and and that uh, those common switch is also connecting the od and oru so by uh, means grandmaster is connected to switch grandmaster broadcast ptp packet to switch and switch will convey those packet towards oru and ODU. so 
next one is the local time source uh, traceable to a means this is the uh, configuration lls4 so uh, jumping back i am showing you the picture so that you people can understand i am taking one example lls3 because mostly mostly in i um, mean real de time deployment people are using this configuration so i will focus on this only because that thing you can uh, refer the i i typically stand up for configuration of ptpn synky packet these, these all are the configuration but i am i am just going with i am taking this picture from oran oran spec only so what happened here see you can see here we will explain next uh, in next we will explain what is the lab setup so that you can get some more idea about this thing so if you see here see here some central network switch are there this is network switch right so that switch is directly com connected with grandmaster so actually this is the grandmaster this is connected with switch and this grandmaster is taking signal from gps if you people having some people from deployment background they might be heard about uh, how we are doing actual integration in fields in the commercial network they must be uh, connected one one gps at uh, some port is there at VB unit uh, and GPS is connected top of the tower. So from that tower, we we can check, we can connect uh, uh, those input towards BV unit. But here, means that that is also for uh, synchronizing the uh, synchronization of uh, all the nodes, means BBU and RU. In legacy network, we are using uh, that kind of setup. But here, we are using uh, Grandmaster and that Grandmaster is directly correct, connected with GPS and here the in, in the switch means a uh, l2 this is the l2 switch l2 switch means that switch is based on mac layer means ethernet switch and that l2 switch uh, layer 2 switch we just connect the there are a lot of code you can you can see in if you people have work uh, for in any lab network then you can see like in in switch there are a lot of code in cell site router is there you people might be uh, get a chance to look at those routers so they having some switch in switch there are multiple port right this is the port this is the port this is the port we can connect multiple uh, node in that uh, that uh, that switch what switch will do switch will basically uh, do coordination between the different different nodes as per their port id and as per their mac address which can uh, take data or uh, take data from one node and it can transfer to uh, address node right if we are using ethernet protocol then we will use mac mac uh, uh, mac uh, id for sending and receiving the data so here here l2 switch is there in each in switch in this switch rh is also connected by using this switch this switch is there so uh how how real time setup will be in in a real time commercial deployment suppose if you're talking about bangalore right bangalore having one area belandur so belandur might be in belandur uh du is there right here belandur du is there this is belandur right du is deployed in some data center or some some cloud network here some banner khatta site is there right this is the rh so this is the banner khatta site this is the uh something um, Manita Manita site, right? This is the Manita uh, Manita site, right? Like this. So how this thing is connected with this this uh, DU? So actually there is switch, right? There is switch. That switch is connected. That switch is uh, reside at Belandu Belandu uh, data center of DU. So this RH is connected to this switch. This RH is connected to this switch, and this uh, uh, du is also connected to this switch and here grandmaster is also connected to this switch grandmaster is also reside at belandur side and this grandmaster having uh, taking signal from gps right like this kind of arrangement is there maybe my picture is not very good but uh, uh, my motto is there you, you people just feel the real network but if you are talking about in talking about the lab environment in lab environment what is the i will show you lab environment in lab environment <clears throat> like our du is here because mostly du data center is in our lab only and rh is also here means du is uh, some some something somewhere else in, in our our lab and that du is connected with one switch here switch and that switch is near to rh here we can connect our rh right 
and in that switch grandmaster is there so like this configuration like this configuration is there so local or remote traceable time because uh, this is the, the this uh, after when when grand grandmaster uh, receive packet uh, receive uh, timing packet from gps then it will broad, broadcast towards uh, central side means du side as well as rru side and as well as cu side as well and this is the central side cu so but our more, more main concern is this so we can we can send uh, uh, this uh, this grandmaster will broadcast the uh, sync packet and this this uh, du or rru should respond back this, yes i received this right so like this uh, this type of uh, this this is the architecture for uh, lls3 so if you want to more uh, about this thing you can go through with iatf means uh, some uh, conf, uh, some uh, standard is there for for this thing you can google about this thing. so if you are more interested but so this is the whole idea okay <clears throat> so next so what is the requirement of this thing why we use the timing sync one one basic requirement if people are means if people are able to understand like uh, due to syncing the time means both nodes should be synced right so next one is the because in uh, why why we use robust robust kind of why we use a very tight timing scheduling between odu and oru in case of oran architecture or in case of uh, cloud also because odu is far from oru but in legacy network odu is very near means only uh, 40 meter maximum distance is there rf cable is 40 meter maximum right 40 to 60 meter but nowadays it is it is around uh, as per oran uh, this timing uh, configuration means timing constant at o, o, odu to oru we can support 40 kilometer means we can put our odu 40 kilometer so this this is the uh, this is the timing uh, gap this is the just i am showing you this is the odu this is the or oru what is t12 t12 when odu send any data at time t right time t so how much time is taking to reach towards oru by using cpr or um, fiber cable because front hall or back hall we are using fiber cable only so by using fiber cable some some timing gap will be there right if we we transmit at t is equal to zero then it will uh, reach at t12 means t0 plus t12 this is the timing so as per as per or and alliance they fix this value this value is something in microsecond something 340 something microsecond is there i have not exact uh, figure uh, we can refer those thing by uh, or and spec so this is the timing between uh, taken by uh, data any any signaling or uh, control plane data user plane data any data from uh, traveling from this oru to o, ODU, odu to oru and what is t2a t2a is the time at rh means rh will uh, take those data right suppose iq data is coming towards rh right suppose user data means iq data actual iq data is received by oru so what oru will do ORU will interpret those data and it will uh, create an electromagnetic signal and transmit via antenna. So there should be some timing there, means because some processing time and some some uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, means uh, uh, from DSP to antenna, right? We need to transfer our data, some uh, means electromagnetic data. So that timing is T2A time. Right? So what is uh, this is the for downlink? What is for uplink? For uplink, uh, antenna will interpret some data and it will create uh, by taking, uh, it will send those data towards uh, DSP unit. So, means some, some time taken is TA3, right? So, for, for antenna to DSP unit, means RH DSP unit. Then, RH will transmit, RH will send those data by using front hall in for uplink direction from OR, ORU to ODU. So, that is that time taken it means that that time is uh, defined by oran as t34 right so ta4 means from from here to here ta3 plus t from from rh for intercepting signal at rh in and sending towards du time what is the time lapse is there ta4 so that ta4 belong to ta3 means this this timing from uh, processing uh, uh, those electromagnetic signal at rh and sending towards uh, du means oru's uh, dsp unit that timing is a ta3 
and TA3 plus and T34 means uh, time taken by sending IQ data towards DU side at, by using front hall interface. So this is the T34. So this time is very tight constant means there are some something uh, around uh, 300 microsecond time constant is there. means in 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 from this interface uh, 100 115 uh, microsecond like this means we, we can see this thing in into orion spec cvs cvs spec so that is just a, just a number but every every vendor strictly follow those those kind of uh, those time constant so for uh, for this thing we need to sync very means our our synchronizations our synchronizations would be in very accurate manner we cannot tolerate uh, any uh, means much error in this uh, for syncing timing and uh, frequency and phase so we need to sync all these three by for syncing all those three we use ptp and synky protocol ptp and synky protocol for for uh, for syncing both nodes by using grandmaster in ls3 configuration as shown in into last figure so so that's all about <coughs> your cus plane so next one ravi are you there uh yeah hi Deepak. so next one uh, ravi might be explain uh, ravi ravi will going to explain this thing uh, uh with how the lab diagram and all in, in real time uh, our means whichever some people belongs to uh, uh, development uh, and some pe some people belong to testing field in real time r and d so might be they can uh, realize like how the how the our network diagram how the our uh, actual lab setup will be there in, in our lab so so ravi can you explain this uh, yeah thanks deepak so hi everyone so Today I'm just going to uh, overview about give the overview about the lab setup. Yeah, as you are seeing in this uh, diagram, so uh, we already you are uh, listening the particular three words uh, repeatedly. That is R U, C U, and D U. So this is the diagram where uh, exactly where the, all the components are uh, connected and how exactly they are connected. I will let you know. So. This RU of any vendor, this is you can say uh, a generic diagram I'm telling you. So this RU is basically uh, connected with the attenuator, the ports, the ports of RU. So, and this, atten uh, this is connected with the RF cable. And after that, uh, this uh, from the attenuator, it can it is uh, connected with the two components like with the signal generator and the signal analyzer. So for signal generator, basically uh, uh, we are using uh, for uh, uplink part, like for checking the sensitivity or checking the rash. And uh, the signal generator, we are checking for uh, this setup. We can check uh, a lot of things uh, which is required uh, for this orient part. Like we are checking for the EVM. We are checking for the timing offset. So like that, we are checking uh, in this uh, signal generator. And here you can see this uh, radio is connected to the laptop through which we are uh, uh, through which we are handling all the things. This is connected by the Ethernet cable. And this RU is then further connected to uh, the switch from where the CU and DU is connected. That is through the EC pre cable it is connected. And uh, uh, the power supply is given uh, to the radio as required. So this is the whole complete setup uh, of uh, ORN. So the main basic component is the signal analyzer and the signal generator, where we are uh, testing the functionality of uh, a radio and uh, DU. So. Uh, this this is the summarized setup. So if you have any query, just uh, let me know. And uh, Deepak, if you want to add on something, uh, yes. you can add. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, Ravi, for uh, for introducing this lab setup diagram to all of the, all of the uh, joining people. So next, means as Ravi told you, what is the use of signal and regional signal generator? <clears throat> Basically, 
if we we are a, are a du du vendor or du du manufacturer or are a manufacturer so we need to check the compatibility between ru and du so how we can check first of all there are a lot of synchronization plane uh, we need to check the sync synchronization plane uh, sync sync properly happen between ru and du or not if synchronization not happen then we cannot attach our network anything means our radio will not radiate so second thing how the control plane is behaving how the user plane is behaving for for all those things we need to check at means so how we can check we can uh, uh, use signal generator and signal analyzer so first of all i will uh, means uh, as ravi explained this is the switch in switch one more thing is connected grandmaster and that switch is connected to du and that switch is uh, means uh, that switch is connect means uh, du is connected with switch and r is also connected with switch some here grandmaster is there so power supply is there we are using attenuator why we are using attenuator because that means our might be our rh can generate some very high power that can in that can uh, uh, that can disturb our our setup signal analyzer and signal generator so signal generator basically we we are using for uh, for uplink data um, uplink side uplink side verification suppose we want to uh, check the our 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 uh, Rach signal, right? Suppose Rach is generated, Rach, Rach compatibility check means we can do by using signal generator. We can generate signal uh, some Z of SU sequence by using this signal generator, and we can generate that that Z means uh, as per required format, format zero, one, two, three. If format zero is used, then eight thirty, eight forty Z of SU sequence we can generate by this signal generator, and that signal seems to this are you like a some real EV is sending some uh, some PRH, right? So that can be that means in this manner we can generate those signal in live. And second one is PVSC signal. So PVSC signal we can also generate by using signal generator. Uh, we we need to load some PVSC uh, PVSC waveform. And that PVSC waveform waveform is generated by the signal generator and intercepted by RU and that RU will take those those uh, signal and convert those signal into IQ format and send towards the switch and switch will send to D right in this manner we are doing so in similar way for downlink what we are doing we are receiving the IQ data and RU will RU will generate those IQ data into waveform and that waveform can be can be uh, checked at VSA. This is called I means uh, uh, voltage signal analyzer. So this here we can see our uh, modulation, which modulation we are using, QAM or 64 QAM or 16 QAM or QPSK. All those constellation diagram we can verify here. I mean we can also verify the uh, uh, our EVM error also means electromagnetic uh, measurement error means what is the EVM error means if you see the constellation diagram there are some some scattered some scattered point is there so we will explain those things in uh, might be in the next webinar in 5G basics uh, physical layer basics because mostly people are, are not able to understand the ba basics of physical layer they just know what is OFDM, yes, OFDM, yes, this, 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 and this um, means uh, this is the signal, but they are not actually feel those things. So we will try to feel those things in next webinar, might be. So that's all for live setup. If you have any query, you can ask. Now. Hi, Deepak, uh, Chetan, and Ravi. It's a, uh, thank you for giving that uh, detailed uh, or on uh, uh, like uh, things like hot exactly happening so my question is like uh, as you mentioned uh, like for downloading data word when that uh, dv is sending something data like iq data so that time that ore is a like a decoding so that that before that it's sending some uh, like control pen information but how about that uh, uplink so just want to know in suppling in uplink same thing happen in reverse manner so in uplink what happen first uh, uh, rh will intercept uh, those electromagnetic signal generated by ev right so that that electromagnetic signal is in uh, real time means time domain data right so by intercepting those signal first rh will convert those signal into uh, into uh, first it will uncover the uh, uh, modulation means some uh, we are modulating at high carrier wave right so first it will uh, cover the baseband baseband uh, modulus baseband uh, uh, frequency baseband uh, data then uh, by using those baseband data it uh, rh will 
convert those baseband data into IQ format and send those IQ data by using CIPRI protocol towards DU side. So who is handling this control plane information? Like, uh, uh, or, uh, like uh, or you will send this control plane information or what you will send? No, in case of in case of uh, downlink, in case of downlink, what do you will send? In case of uplink, some instruction is go going via or are you? Okay, okay. Thank you. But always master node is or or do you? Yes. And uh, if possible, can you please uh, like in next session cover like high fi and uh, low fi? So this is uh, depth. Uh, Definitely, uh, that is actually something that is uh, actually uh, that is not the scope of this because that will take a lot of time for understanding. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, DSP yes. technique and all how the FFT involve how the DFT technique yeah. means uh, that thing is uh, means a bit uh, complicated. We will cover separately those things. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a nice session, and uh, you guys are amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, Satyam. It will boost our morale. Yeah, Any other question? You. Any for your wonderful session. Uh, can we also get that uh, recording session, this recording of? Uh, yes, definitely. We will share your link, uh, YouTube link. You can go through with those. On your channel, huh? Uh, tech yes. Healthy Word. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, okay. Uh, hello, Shikul, sir. Uh, I just wanted to ask one thing. Like, you know, today you have explained all the details between DU and RU. Uh, what about yes. the CU? Like, you know, it's basic, like, you know, functioning and how it is going to, like, you know, play a role in this. Or it's like this minimum. Actually, Rajas, CU plan we not cover. I Means uh, for uh, CU uh, central unit, right? So basically, um, all the layer three messaging, layer three PDCP, all those things belong to uh, at those layer. But we will cover those things. We'll cover. We will try to cover. <laughs> not guaranteed, but we will try to cover. Also, As we are planning to cover. Also, we are planning to cover CU uh, plane det in detail uh, with respect to own spec like section uh, type uh, one, yes. two, one, two, three. In that, yes, yes, yes. There are a lot of things in. If you go to pre header, if you go for uh, suppose you are going with uh, some own spec, so there are a lot of things section ID, section type, all those things that is that cannot be covered in one hour or one and a half hour webinar. For those, we yes, take yes. some separate. Mm -hmm. Wait for next time. Two more things have uh, I've like messaged also. Uh, like uh, you were explaining about all the like uh, control plane and S plane and that uh, U plane. Okay. Uh, is it only between like you know uh, that uh, DU and RU or it is going to with the other things also? Like because uh, mostly what we have read is like in backhaul there's always to be, uh, there's going to be control user and like management plane, right? So is it going to there be with also, all the other? There, there, there is also, but there is some some different means not not like this, but there is means always there should be some controlling data, some management data, some all those things is there. So that is not means like like not means sound like not this means in in front all CVS plane. In similar way, some uh, uh, that plane also having some some uh, plane uh, some management plane for managing those devices there are a lot of different different techniques we are using so non ric ric might be heard about those things so we will discuss those things so one last thing uh, like uh, in like in 4g we use gps for all like in a kind of synchronization right in 5g yes. also it's going to play or it's going to be like some other other options also right? like like uh, on ip yes. also we can we can just uh, try to synchronize so is it going to be there or it's only going to be based on gps like 4g no uh, you we can ultimately gps is the main source of time right so we either you can directly connect those, G, those gps source right um, but your your device should be uh, should able to handle those gps signal right there there is provisioning for there is some for for processing all those things some some separate unit is there in, in our chipboard and second thing you can use ptp ptp packet also so ptp packet might be at uh, means at ethernet packet is there for ptp sync or ethernet or ip based packet ptp we, we can use ptp ntp also ptp also and gps also all three we can use in either in 4g either in 5g 5g and um, but oran we are mostly using ptp plus sync 
thank you very much it was very insightful and it was like you know you explained it very well thank you very much thank you thank you really the yeah, channel and uh, 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 all the teams it's really uh, helpful to us and yeah, waiting for the next you, uh, winner <laughs> thank you thank you our our mo main motto is just learn technology very simple way means people are me if you attended lot of webinar they are talking mostly very technical term and people are not able to understand i know uh, we are also here we are talking about some if you, your basics are not not clear then might be were not able to understand iq and all so but we will cover those things we will cover those things might we cover in uh, if we, we will find because we are also working so as per time constraint we are doing this thing yeah and if you have any query or anything you, know, you can like write it on like uh, linkedin also and we will try to up videos on sort sort topics also might be it's, it's taking it, it used to take time so but we will try to add a small topics uh, of youtube uh, to youtube and we'll try to arrange some more seminars uh, webinars uh, in going forward okay so and meanwhile if you have anything you just uh, you, you can write it to uh, the, uh, in linkedin or uh, you just uh, mail us yes yes okay. yes Thank you, all okay. team. It's a nice effort from you guys. Hey, this is Sanket. Okay. Uh, do you have some yes, time to cover my question? Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Definitely, we have time. Yeah. So yeah. First of all, Deepak, Ch Chetan, and Ravi, thank you so much for hosting the second session. Uh, can you elaborate more about the Sync E protocol? Uh, for uh, the uh, for that, why do we require some more session? I know, I, I know your, your doubt. What is the LLS one, LLS three, LLS two? So how this thing happen? So if okay. you want some more depth in those things, right? Means what is the thing? What is the is this specification? What yeah, is the brand? I'm name? not finding much resources on internet on sync. I, I got about PTP, but. <laughs> I was also studying about okay. this, but so I'm... actually, actually, what happened in Sinki is used for face synchronization. So I'm just you asking, okay. so I I didn't cover those things because some people sometimes people will confuse. So what happened uh, if this is your RRU, right? This is RRH. This is DU. Right. So RH will generate some waveform, some signal by for doing FFT, FFT processing, FFT or IFFT processing. Either F50 or F50 process. So we have some some frequency uh, domain. That means our our oscillator should be very much sync. Means uh, some, might be might be our RH is sync on time domain. Suppose suppose uh, just I'm trying to analy anal analogically uh, explain those things. Suppose this is your signal, right? This is sinusoidal signal. This is right. This is sine wave. Sine wave having the m. This is the y is equal to sine theta, right? But if your sine theta become theta means this is the means uh, uh, if your timing is sync, then your signal will be behave like this. Suppose your timing is sync, your timing is okay, your du and cu timing is okay, but your oscillator is some phase difference is there. Might be your oscillator, both the oscillator is time time sync, but your oscillator having some phase phase changes. Suppose your y sine theta slightly become y sine theta plus something phi, right? So then how how the phase is there for this this thing? Suppose so your signal is like this, right? Because this is the this phase difference happen. So this phase difference. Can create problem for for generating the FFT bins or FFT bins, right? So for those things, we require Sinki. So Sinki basically the task of Sinki, uh, uh, Sinki means uh, uh, timing is already sync. Means uh, timing uh, trigger is sync. But your oscillators phase should also sync. Uh, your oscillators should know this time we need to create this frequency. This time we need to create this frequency. Although your timing is sync, but your if your your uh, your Clock your oscillator oscillator is not sync with the phase, then some frequency error is there. That frequency error might be uh, 10 to 15 hertz. That is tolerable up to 10 to 15 hertz. Uh, tolerable uh, 10 to 15 hertz hertz uh, frequency tolerable. More than 100 hertz is not tolerable because our means 10 to 15 hertz somewhat we can tolerate. But 
if your uh, your oscillator uh, generates some more uh, phase error so that can be handled by sinky so that's why we are sending sinky and uh, ptv both packet so that your our ev can uh, our uh, rh can sync on both means uh, uh, timing and phase both i hope this thing some somewhat you, you can understood understand sanke uh, there okay yeah got it so okay uh, so my How second more insight uh, yes yes ask ask, ask. So, uh, like last in last uh, webinar, you said that you might be connected to multiple, like three or four are uh, used. So, how does this all these uh, across all these planes communication happens from the switch? Uh, do you to switch to are yes, you? Yes, very good question. Well, very very good. For that, for that, for that, Sanket, we are using EXID, EXID, and some there are uh, means might be if you get a chance, then we will show you the some data from log only means real time log means some what is the real ecpri log contain so ecpri will contain exid and some uh, as someone asking like what is the section id and this id that id so that thing it means addressing some header in those order control plane header as well as user plane header means how rr will figure out like on which uh, uh, suppose there are four cross four mimo is used by rr so on which uh, layer <coughs> on which layer is uh, belongs uh, which layer belongs to which uv which which uv belongs to which layer and which uh, portion of uh, uh, radio bearer belongs to which like this uh, we have a xid and all for uh, for for differentiating between uh, different different data type different different uv type different different uh, channel type Any other question? Sanket, okay, I hope got it. Your, your, yeah, your that's all I have. Yeah, Any that's other? all I have. But yeah, thank you so much for hosting. Thank this. you, thank you, Sanket. Thank you, Sanket. Any other people? So we are summarizing. So thank you all. Thanks all for attending uh, this webinar. And uh, might be Chetan. Uh, we can summarize. Yeah. Yeah, one exactly. request, uh, please, uh, like whenever you are making some uh, webinars, so please try to schedule in weekend, most probably, so we can uh, all can join.